This is quite possibly the most unnecessarily complicated 35 liter EATX case you've ever seen, and I kind of love it. It's called the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur. Absolute tongue twister of a name. What we're gonna do is our usual thing. We're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna test the thermals. We're gonna do absolutely everything, but before that, Here's a word from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by VIPSEDKey.com. You install Windows and you see the watermark of death. You don't need to fork out a couple hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor. From VIPSEDKey.com for a tenth of the price and you can use our code GEAR to get 25% off. How good's that? That takes that already cheap Windows key and makes it even cheaper. You place your order, bingo bango, you've got your key on your orders page, you chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR for 25% off, link in the description. On with the video. Let's start off with panel removal. To remove the tempered glass side panel, there's a little arrow on the bottom right hand side of the panel. Just put your finger underneath it and pull it. It makes this awful scratching glass sound that I don't like and then you just lift it up off the pegs on the side of the case. Removing the top panel, which so happens to be the rear panel as well, is unnecessarily complicated, but there are pegs that hold it down and you kind of just push the panel up and it feels like you're bending the panel, which you are, and then you lift the panel away because for some reason, Geometric Future thinks that it's 9098. It continues to get more complicated removing the top panel, which is basically a requirement because of the way that this case is laid out and the way you want to build in it. Thumb screw here, normal screw here. Sorry if I'm locking the shot. There's another screw here. There's another screw <laughs> on the inside of the case. And only then can we lift up this panel and away from the case. Oh, and we're not done yet removing panels. Longest panel removal ever. Another two on the top. And then after removing the 900th screw, you can pull the whole power supply bracket away from the case. We finally have access to the whole inside of the case. Now, the idea of this case is using principles from small form factor cases to support motherboards up to EATX, right? That's the theory. For storage support, you've got a couple options. You can do up to two 3.5 inch Bing rush drives or four 2.5 inch SSDs. However, you will need to use the bracket that I showed a little bit earlier that we removed from the other side of the case. Power supplies can be mounted in two way in the Model 4. You can install it to the side of the case, which is probably the way that I'll be doing it here. And basically the cables will come out towards the camera and then you can put the bracket on top. And with the bracket, you can mount the power supply to the front of the case through the top and you can run the extension cable for the power cord through the top of the case. If you're wanting to change the layout of the inside of the case, which I'll come back to in a moment, the maximum PSU length is 150 mils in both orientations. On the bottom, you can do up to a 360 millimeter radiator, which I wouldn't recommend if you're using an AIO, or you can do three 120 mil fans or two 140 mil fans down the bottom. On top of the case is where it gets interesting. You can do two 120 mil fans. However, if you remove the bracket, you can make the case a little bit higher. Obviously you need to put the screws and everything in to mount it properly, but then you can do a 240 mil liquid cooler or radiator at the top and it adds a bit of internal volume. And the case looks ridiculous when you do it like this as well, but you can do it. I also wanted to mention the case has a skirt along the bottom edge of the case, lifting the whole chassis up but I would not recommend putting fans on the other side of this. For motherboard support in the Model 4, you can go from ITX all the way up to EATX with a maximum width of 280 mils. So surprisingly, this is the best thing about this case so far is the fact that you can do an EATX board in a 35 liter case. While we're here for air cooler height, you're looking at 164 millimeters max. For GPU support, you've got a maximum supported length of up to 405 millimeters, but be aware that you need to be mindful of the orientation of your power supply, because if you're changing it to be mounted from the top down, not the side and across, you're reducing that 
maximum length to around about 310 millimeters. For internal case wiring, we've got the extension cable for the power cable that plugs into your power supply because the power supply mounts at the front of the case. We've got a USB type C front panel cable as well as all the cables to power your system and let you know that it's on, a front panel audio cable and a USB 3.2 type A connector as well. Full front panel I.O. we've got a USB type C port, a headphone jack, a microphone jack, two USB type A ports, a reset button, a power light, a hard disk activity light and a power button. There's an included dust filter on top of the case as well, it's a magnetic dust filter. For cable management there's a hole that looks adequately sized for EPS power cables. There's also holes for pass through in case you need to put your 24 pin power cable through. You've got a cable pass through hole at the bottom here where most of the power cables to the back of your system will go. You've also got lots of cutouts along the bottom edge where your motherboard cables will plug in and any fans or anything as well. I thought I'd show you guys the high layout as well in case you're wanting to do a liquid cooler at the top here. This is literally how the panel goes back on and it's kind of weird if I'm being honest. It's got a huge gap in the front where you'd plug in the extension cable for the power supply. We just rotate the case around you can see that I mean, it is, it's pretty interesting that they decided to go down this route. To route their cable as well, it goes through that back corner and all the way along the back edge of the case. On the back, you'll notice the additional cutouts for where the panel sits for when you put it back on like this. So it is very, very sh peculiar. But it's different and different is good. That's everything I think you need to know about the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur. What a weird name. Anyway, we're gonna test the thermals and do a build and all that stuff and then we'll let you know if it's any good and worth your hard earned money. Let's get building.
Let's take a look at the thermals of the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the GPU thermals are absolutely excellent. Simple reason, there's three 120mm fans blowing directly into the GPU, adding a lot more cooling potential for the GPU. With saying that, it does block some of the airflow to the air cooler for the CPU. However, if we look at the temperatures with the side panels off and the top panel off, it doesn't make much of a difference whatsoever. So I would say that it's more to do with the cooler rather than the case itself. So very, very interesting result here. And ultimately the thermals aren't terrible. They're just odd because this is a chimney layout case. And this is what we usually see with chimney layouts with GPU temperatures being really good and CPU temperatures, if it's air cooled, being kind of average. Another thing to mention as well, the front panel is half open, like the side where the power supply isn't. And that does help draw air in. However, the airflow pattern for that is a little bit odd as it's not really gonna pull air in as much as you would think because it draws in air from the bottom of the case and it kind of doesn't work like that with airflow, if that makes sense. Maybe I can demonstrate this for you guys. I'll do a Mr. Matt Lee and show you guys exactly what I mean so you guys can see how this works. By the way, we were the first to do that. <laughs> I hit 100K, I'll say whatever I want. <laughs> I like Matt, he's a good man. What do you mean, he loves coffee, so do I, we're best friends. I'm not a jerk to Matt, we talk all the time, we're buddies. I love you. <laughs> Even though you never speak. <laughs> <laughs> he's catfishing you. He's catfishing me, it's not even him. Catfishing it's me? just ChatGPT. <laughs> Matt Lee is AI. No, it's Mr. ChatGPT. Go sub to Mr. Matt Lee, get him to 101,000 subscribers. <laughs> In terms of all the hardware used in this build, there's a PC part picker list down below in the description, plus there's little cards during the build section of the video that show what all of the hardware is to make your life a little bit easier. There are a couple things I want to mention with the hardware though. I know someone's gonna say something about me using an SFX power supply, and this kind of leads into what I think about the Model 4 from Geometric Future. The measurements for this case are all over the place, and to me personally, this is just a very confusing case. My thought is, I think Geometric Future was, well, in win, let's be honest, it is in win. They were trying to make a small form factor case and were like, you know what? Let's make this 35 liter case, but we'll let people put EATX motherboards in it. And that's exactly what I did because I wanted to test to see if that was actually a thing. And kind of had all the hallmarks of these small form factor cases that we see, but with a bit of a twist. If I'm being honest, I think the twists are cool in their own way. So changing the bracket at the top of the case to allow for liquid coolers up top is really cool. It could have been executed a little bit better. I just don't like the gaping hole at the front of the case. It just looks weird. And the fact that you can see the power cable into the PSU if you wanna do it that way is weird. And while we're on the topic of power supply, this is kind of what I was trying to say, but I was rambling. I had to use an SFX power supply in this layout because there just wasn't enough room to plug in the cables and run the cables. It's just very, very odd. If you were to use something like the Corsair Shift power supply, I don't think this would be much of an issue, but with a regular sized power supply, even something that's like 130 mil, there's just not that much space at all to run the cables from the backside of the power supply. And it's kind of impossible to make it fit without damaging cables. I tested this with about three different power supplies and that's why I ended up using an SFX power supply in the build. There's a lot of things that I do that I don't show. Usually the reason why things are done a certain way is because I came to that conclusion before I hit record, right? I guess that's a bit of an insight with how I come to conclusions with certain builds and the hardware that I chose. Now, that said, I wanted to make sure this was air-cooled because that's just how I'm feeling at the moment. And to be honest, I feel like this is better for air cooling 
rather than if you were to use a liquid cooler because as I mentioned, this case is all over the place. The measurements are all over the place. They recommend putting a 360 mil liquid cooler at the bottom of the case. And if we've learned anything with cases like the NR200, liquid coolers at the bottom of the case are not good. You're asking for a dead pump. In terms of the build quality for the Model 4, it's really good. It's classic in-wind quality that we're seeing here. And the paint job on the case is really nice too. You probably noticed that when we went through and looked at the case from start to finish that I used the white case and then when I built I ended up using the black case. There was just something about the tone of the yellow. It just looks very, very cool. It's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but in person it's just, it looks really cool. I don't know, I just have an affinity with yellow in general and I just like it. It's a piss coloured case. I love it. I don't have some weird pee fetish, guys. I just like the color, come on. In terms of the cable management, it surprised me. There's so much room on the backside for cable managing things, and it was fine. Even with the power supply and running the cables from the SFX power supply through the back, and I use cable extensions because I just wanted that aesthetic as well. One thing I will say that if you're using an SFX power supply, the EPS cables are gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass because they're not quite long enough. So if you use extensions, you're gonna be good. But with a regular power supply, you're just not gonna have this issue at all. One thing I wanted to mention was the rear fan. With the uni fan, I had to remove the metal side bracket to make it fit, otherwise it just wouldn't fit. Here's the bottom line with the Geometric Future model for King Arthur. It is unnecessarily complicated when it comes to removing panels and whatnot. They could have made it a lot easier. Now, for me personally, who's a seasoned PC builder, it's fine. But for people who haven't built lots of PCs, it can get quite confusing. I will say that the documentation is quite good. So if you ever get stuck when you're building in this thing, it's going to help you out, and especially with clearances and how to put the panels back on. But like I said, it is unnecessarily complicated. There's too many screws. They could have reduced the amount of screws to make it a little bit easier. But at the end of the day, this is more of a bespoke kind of case. And I don't think this case is for everyone. And I don't hate this case because it looks really, really cool. And I think that it pains me to say it. It's a cool case, but it's definitely not for everyone. And... If I was given the option to buy this 35 litre EATX case, I probably wouldn't buy it. But it is cool to check out because that's what we do here. We look at almost every case we can get our hands on. And if you want to get your hands on the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur, the black version that we've got here is going for around 99 US dollars. And the white version that we showed earlier is going for around 109 US dollars at the time of filming this video. As far as Australian availability, I've got no idea with these cases. Usually we don't see geometric future cases here in Australia, but you know, I'll update the description if I find out more information. And there you have it, ladies and gents, a new case from geometric future. It's been a little while since they've made something new. And I think, although this is unnecessarily complicated, they're on the right track. I just worry that they don't look at any other cases that have ever been made and just want to do their own thing. And in the long run, that can be a bit of a problem. But yeah, I think this is an interesting effort. Make sure you subscribe though. We do have another new Geometric Future case that we're going to be checking out in the next couple of days that I think you guys might find a little bit more interesting than the Model 4. It's called the Model 2 Arc. It is a small form factor case that fits MATX motherboards and is in a very strange form factor. So yeah, subscribe and all that. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking on that join button right down there. Down below, I've also got a video talking about how I make all the music too that you might find interesting. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and I'll catch you next time. For some reason, this computer is doing a Windows update right now and it keeps ramping up, even though I set the fan curve to silent for filming. <laughs> Story of my life. Let us know what you think. See ya. Huh.
Oh, it's such a weird long name. Why would they call it the Geometric Future Model 4 King Arthur? Why do they always have weird names? I don't get it. I mean, it's better than Prince Albert. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can't help yourself, I can can't, you? I really can't. <laughs> Prince Albert. I'm here all week. You, can, go you can Google that if you want. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> don't do that.